Life and Death Row, which was, um, it's a strand on BBC Three that's been running for, what, three years now? As Luke mentioned last week when he picked it as his pick of the week, um, that this was the first time that they've had it um, on BBC Two. It's airing on Sunday nights at nine o'clock. Um, it is all set in um, Arkansas in 2017 and tells the story of... Uh, eight executions that were going to happen over 10 days. Uh, the reason that the executions are occurring is because that the well, one of the drugs that's used in the sort of lethal injection process is running out. The, the only sort of um, death row inmate we spend time with here is Stacey Johnson, who's the third man to be executed. We hear about his um, the murder that he's supposed to have committed in 1993. He still claims he's innocent. Um, it was based on the the testimony of the um, victim's then six-year-old daughter. We get sort of backstories about the first two men to be executed, um, Bruce Ward and Don Davis. We hear from the daughter of the victim of Don Davis. We hear Davis's views through like a taped message. But this is more about like the rush to get stays of execution, to get pardons, to get these these stays then overturned. You've got this sort of the two sides of the argument in Arkansas. You've got the governor who's very pro the death penalty. You've got this really sort of um, vocal protest group. And then what I really like was the like Vox Pops with just general me- people on the street who had their own sort of views one way or another. It is a very sort of emotive subject. And I think it mm. is really well done here. They give you the sort of ticking clock down to the, the first two executions. You get that sort of sense of dread and foreboding and waiting as 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 the the sort of guy who's going to administer it is waiting by the phone for a decision from the 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 grand jury and things like that i really like this i like the way it was set out i like the way you sort of met some of the the players involved and the and the people in the state as a whole i i I struggled a little bit with this because i think it was a bit long i i felt like they were jumping around a little bit during the show i i appreciate the, the the very interesting subject matter uh, and the unique opportunity that I don't think, you know, uh, uh, to, to sort of film this process. You've obviously got that kind of Republican, Christian uh, mm. sort of governor, you we know, saw, very sort of moralistic. And that one guy who was shouting at the protest group on the street wearing the he's my president T-shirt. That's it. But I think, unfortunately, because there was there were seven people to sort of cover... I felt like they moved around a bit. And because, obviously, as you say, they only interviewed the third guy... Uh, the first two would, would, you know, were sort of like their stories were talked about. I just felt like it was overly long. I, I, I could have done with like 40 minutes, not an hour. I don't think it really sort of held my attention because of the moving around. I don't really feel like I ever settled on one storyline to get behind. I do find America fascinating. I, d- I always did do, even when I lived there, I found it a fascinating and contradictory and backwards and then go forwards place. And I think this showcased it at its most... Mm. intriguing really and I, I think the the this is the sort of program that the BBC should be commended for making because the access they get is tremendous I wasn't bothered at all by the fact that the story moves around and if this was a drama and it had flashbacks and then this then that then it would bother me perhaps but mm. this documentary I found all the talking heads really interesting and an insight onto something we don't normally see I'd have liked to have seen the prisoners more and spoken to them but access is access this is very different if you've seen the life or life and death row uh strand before these are very different they do normally talk to the yes, people involved mm. uh, and uh i w- so you're going mm, they're like you're not interested in that as well. no no but like I, I... no don't go mm, you know, explain i don't Tell me know what's on your mind i i i, I, I... He's got us. I found, he's, I found, we've broken I found, him. He's I, broken. I found, it, I found it very controversial, but overly. What do you like, mean I felt, by that? I don't know. I, I, I kind of felt like whoever was directing the show also had a message they wanted to give, as well as like reporting the facts that that, that well, there was a bit yeah, of a, dr- a, dr- a dr- yeah. But like 
that's not documentary style, then. That's a little yes, bit of is. dramatic license. Yes, it is. No, no, no. Well, no, it it's, it's not. Louis okay, Theroux it's... always has a message. Yeah, but his name's it. on the front. You know it's about. That's what I'm saying. He, I, I, that's I, Minutia I, again. Every that's Minutia. Has an ad- every documentary has an agenda, whether you think it does or not. It's There's never. That's, just... a, that's, a good, that's a good point, I suppose. I suppose just because it comes from the BBC and it's. You know, it, it, it's a series by British in America. I just feel like I wanted to be a bit more detached and, and look at all points, whereas I felt like they were kind of highlighting... So what, their, what's the other side kind of, of the argument you didn't see? It felt like they were saying, isn't it terrible that these people are going to be put to death just because the drug's running out? Well, no, hold on. The bigger point is they've committed crimes which in that country deserve the death penalty and it's never happened because of appeals and everything. And hold on a minute, they still should be going. Whether you agree with the death penalty or not, and I don't, according to the law in that country, they should still be facing death. People die on death row I before think it's, they oh, yeah. execute I think it. it's the rush to do it rather than the fact that it's going to happen. I think it's the fact that it's been... But, at the but same then there, time, was, there was also have... quite a lot in that first episode about how they feel that the drug isn't appropriate and the side effects, and or not the side effects, the way in which it affects people. It's like... There was a lot of kind of like, oh, my opinion, rather than medical fact, I suppose. There you are. There are, I was looking for a bit more medical fact and law, and what you got was a lot more opinion and emotion. Okay, there you go. The sort of the key narrative is the story of Stacey Johnson, but they're also doing these two executions or these two inmates per episode, so they wanted to give a little bit of context. They wanted a character who would be at the first execution who was the daughter of the Lady Jane who was murdered by Don Davis. And that's, uh, yeah. Her story was very compelling. I, I, I know what you mean, and Gary, you're someone who loves facts, who loves looking for the logic yeah. in things, and because they were moving, you know, because they went sort of Prisoner 3, Prisoner 2, Prisoner 1, and they moved around, and there was a lot of different characters and a lot of different stories, that I can understand why you weren't yeah. as taken with it. But of the three documentaries, I think this is the one that stuck with me the most. And I think I will watch the others, because I do feel like the... The behind the scenes mm. storyline is compelling. You know, I, I don't know if this is a situation that's ever come up before or would ever come up again. 